While a few electric locomotives were used with overhead wires have only a single pantograph, most have two, and some even more than that. But why have multiple pantographs in the first place? And how does one decide which one to use? Let me explain. Before we can answer these questions, however, it is important to differentiate between two different types of pantograph heads. The sole purpose of pantographs is to collect the current from the overhead wires, as a return happens through the rails. Thus, a single contact point to a single wire is enough to create an electrical circuit. And the heads of early pantographs only have a single contact point through a single contact strip. But having only one point of contact can be quite unreliable. Because of this, pantograph heads these days usually have at least two contact strips. And they can come both as diamond-shaped or single-armed pantographs. As the shape doesn't matter in this context. For the most part. We come back to that. Let's start with the easy part. Locomotives using pantographs with only a single contact point. Those pantographs are mostly found on locomotives built until the mid-1950s. Due to the unreliability of having only one contact point, those locomotives are generally equipped with two pantographs whenever possible. And both are used simultaneously. Electric shunting or branch line locomotives are an exception from this rule, however, as they usually don't have enough space for a second pantograph. But due to the significantly lower speed, having only a single contact point is less of an issue. With modern pantographs, featuring at least two contact strips, found on pretty much all new-built locomotives since the mid-1950s, but also many older ones were retrofitted with them, the use of only a single pantograph is sufficient and even preferable due to reduced wear. And while this enables locomotives to be equipped with one pantograph only, like its common practice in Great Britain, in most countries, electric locomotives are still equipped with two, increasing availability, as it would require both rather than just one pantograph to be faulty to put a locomotive out of service. But that raises a question, no pun intended, if it even matters which pantograph to use. From an electrical perspective, it doesn't. But from a mechanical one, it does. The contact between wire and head creates abrasion, especially from the contact strips of the heads, usually made from carbon. To save the locomotive roof from this kind of dirt, it is preferable to use a pantograph at the back relative to the direction of travel. This also eliminates the risk of the unused pantograph getting damaged if the raised one gets torn off. And indeed, the use of the back pantograph accounts for the majority of trains. But there are various special cases, from dangerous cargo over icy overhead wires to double headers. In the case of both, dangerous cargo like easily flammable liquids or sensitive goods like brand new cars and open transporters, usually the first pantograph is used to avoid abrasion or sparks from the pantographs hitting the wagons. Should the required pantograph be defect, however, the other one can be used, even in the case of dangerous or delicate cargo. The only time a locomotive would use both its pantographs, despite having two contact strips on each, is in the case of an iced overhead wire, reducing contact reliability drastically. In this case, speed restrictions apply, however. Let's now get to double headers, and it is here where things get a bit more complicated. But there's one fundamental rule that always applies. To keep the distance between the race pantographs of the two locomotives as far apart as possible. The friction between the pantograph and the wire causes a later one to vibrate, which can affect the ability of the trailing pantograph to maintain contact with the wire. The shorter the distance, the stronger the effect, and speed restrictions can be necessary depending on the types of locomotives and pantographs used. Because of that, in most situations, the leading locomotive raises its first pantograph and the second one its rear pantograph. Additionally, this also prevents the abrasion created by the first locomotive's pantograph from hitting the windscreen of the second one. Should the double header pull dangerous or sensitive goods, however, both locomotives use their first pantograph to protect the load. But as this results into a shorter distance between both pantographs, 
the allowed top speed might be restricted. For triple headers, the same basic rules apply. Therefore, the first two locomotives usually use their front pantograph and the last locomotive its rear pantograph, maximizing the distance and keeping windscreens clean. But just like with single headers, should the required pantograph on a locomotive be defect, the other one can be used. But potential speed restrictions for shorter pantograph distances have to be kept in mind. In situations where a raised rear pantograph of one locomotive is directly followed by a raised front pantograph of the locomotive behind it, should be avoided whenever possible and in the case of the involvement of at least one diamond shaped pantograph are forbidden altogether. Now you may ask how double headers of locomotives with only a single contact point per pantograph are formed as they usually have diamond shaped ones. For this instance there is no good solution, but a solution nonetheless. While the leading locomotive raises as per usual both its pantographs, the second one only uses its rear pantograph. But with all of that, we haven't even talked about the locomotives with more than two pantographs. Indeed, many European locomotives are equipped with a total of four. So now it gets really complicated, right? Actually not at all, as these are simply locomotives suitable for multiple electrification systems using different electric currents. Those locomotives are often required for international train services to avoid the need of changing locomotives midway. And whether a multi-system locomotive has in total just two or up to four pantographs, it is the electrical system of the route which determines which one to use. For multiple headers, the distance between two pantographs still has to be kept in mind though. And should a multi-system locomotive have the same pantograph type twice, then the same rules apply as with single system locomotives to choose which one to use. Did you find this video informative? then please let me know by leaving a like. What strange pantograph formations were you able to observe? An electrifying thank you goes to my channel members BR151, Contrian, Dave Heise, Flip Schwip, Kay Frankly and Lukas Ilskens for enduring the future of my channel. As more videos are always in the works. See you on the next one here at Steelbridge Models.